second meeting of the Lenten pilgrimages organized by the Franciscans of the Holy Land took place in the Basilica of Gethsemane next to the Garden of Olives. From Aleppo to Jerusalem, Catholics and people of other faith denominations join in initiatives of prayer for peace. The Chapel of Perpetual Worship of the Milk Grotto in Bethlehem is one of the international centers of prayer for peace, a response to the conflict in the Middle East and in the world. For over 30 years, the Ruwak Center has restored hundreds of historic and archaeological buildings in Palestine in order to preserve cultural heritage and national identity. This is the only postgraduate center in the hotel industry in East Jerusalem. Every year, over 160 Christian and Muslim students are trained here to work in the restaurant and in the tourism industry. The Mount of Olives has been sacred to Christians since the early centuries. At the foot of this place is the Basilica of the Agony, also called Gethsemane Church. This is a place that frames a particular segment of Jesus' passion, his agony during which he fought against death. The anguish and sadness that Jesus felt during his agony summarize the anguish and sadness of all humanity, that in him find the true man who struggles to find a meaning. And Jesus did find meaning in abandonment, that is, in abandoning himself to a destiny that is perhaps greater than his human capacities. Love and trust in the Father, however, gave him the strength to face all of this. Ma l'amore e la fiducia nei confronti del padre gli danno la forza di affrontare tutto questo. The second stage of the liturgical pilgrimages took place here. These pilgrimages, which retrace the holy places linked to the passion of Christ, began last week at the church where Jesus wept for Jerusalem. In the basilica, purposely ill-lit to remember the night of Christ's agony, the vicar of the custody of the Holy Land, Friar Dobromir Jashtal, presided at the Mass and led the prayer of Vespers. The homily was given by Father Luigi Maria Epicoco. The Italian priest stressed that on the night of Gethsemane, at the moment of absolute solitude, Jesus needed his friends. One of the worst experiences of anguish is loneliness, even when your friends are absent. This is also the place where Jesus brought his best friends, Peter, James, and John, but his friends fell asleep. That is, they were not present during his suffering, therefore his pain was amplified by horizontal loneliness. There are moments in our lives in which even the people who love us the most cannot stand by us. They cannot stand before what we are experiencing. We can say that he has touched the bottom of every possible affliction. All that a man can experience in terms of suffering, Jesus has lived it. Il fondo di tutto, tutto quello che un uomo può sperimentare in termini di sofferenza, Gesù l'ha raggiunto. Here at Gethsemane, there are also other activities to contribute to ensuring that local Christians, religious, and pilgrims live the Lenten period intensely. One of these initiatives is the Holy Hour, which takes place on Thursday night, in which the participants have the opportunity to be present at the Eucharistic Adoration in preparation for Easter. Another initiative is held in the Cave of the Betrayal, in this place where, according to tradition, Jesus met the Apostles and was handed over to the soldiers by Judas. The Lectio Divina, the prayer study of the Word of God, takes place every week. First of all, we are in a holy place and for us the Lectio is an opportunity and a return to being like the disciples, to be around Jesus, to be near Jesus who often comes here. We invite different people like the friars, the professors who are here at the Stadium Biblicum Franciscanum, and others. We ask them to come here to join us in welcoming the Dominical Word in a deeper way. On the Sabbath, we listen to the Word in advance to prepare ourselves to powerfully experience this great gift that the Lord gives us. Più in profondità, la parola Dominicale.
The drama of the civil war in Syria has intensified in the last month, especially in the city of Ghouta, located 20 kilometers from Damascus. Recently, the Salesian priest from Aleppo, Father Munir Hanachi, has issued a message saying that the last seven years of war have been difficult, but in these days the situation is even more painful. The Franciscan parish priest of Aleppo, Father Ibrahim Alsba, talks about the current situation. We have not reached peace even in Aleppo. Yesterday there were many bombings on civilians in the west of the city, and this time many were reported dead and wounded. Even in the midst of so much pain, faith persists. In the parish of St. Francis of Aleppo, for example, Father Ibrahim celebrated various masses for children in favor of peace. Non è nascosto a nessuno che la situazione si aggrava sempre di più. It is not a secret that the situation in Syria is getting worse and every day we hear the noise of weapons and statements in favor of war and death rather than in favor of peace and life. We continue to pray. Our story in Syria is not over. Continuiamo a pregare. Non è finita la nostra storia in tutta la Siria. Before the complexity of the situation in Syria, initiatives that help keep our hope alive arise all over the world. Here in Jerusalem, for example, the representatives of different faith denominations pray together for peace. About 50 people belonging to different confessions and nationalities participated in the prayer led by Brother Emil from the Teze community. The event marked by times of silence, songs and prayers in various languages took place in the chapel of the Tantor Ecumenical Institute. Sometimes Christians think that silence is only in monasteries, it's only monks, but the people of God, the people in the parishes, should also be able to discover silence, uh, meditative prayer, and that's why we offer this prayer uh, and share it with people who come to Teze. In there are differences among participants, but what unites them is what prevails, the desire to lift up to God's supplications for peace in the world. I think that we spend so much time praying on our own separately and thinking within our own communities, and we don't have enough opportunities. We have very, very few opportunities, actually, to pray together. Um, and we need, we need to hear each other, we need to hear each other pray, we need to sit next to each other. Um, I need the other people here. Silence during adoration can communicate a message. In the Chapel of Perpetual Adoration, prayers have a specific intention, peace and reconciliation among peoples. This place of prayer is located inside the Milk Grotto in the city of Bethlehem and is part of the project 12 Stars on the Crown of the Virgin Mary, Queen of Peace. Its purpose is to create 12 international centers of continuous prayer in different places of conflict around the world. Absolutely. I believe, and I... I believe that the only way we can have peace in the Middle East and in the whole world is through peace in our hearts through many actions and prayers by the people who are involved in the peace-building process. Here the nuns pray for Syria and other places of conflict every day. People participation in this movement is important. We invite everyone to come here and we encourage the pilgrims who come to Bethlehem to visit this chapel in particular and to pray for peace. That are working for peace. We need to support them. Presently, with the eyes of the world upon the war in Syria, especially in the Middle East, the request for prayer for peace is even more timely and fits into a prayer schedule. An example was a recent invitation by Pope Francis, addressed to Christians and non-Christians, to a special day of prayer and fasting for peace on February 23rd, 24 hours for the Lord, on March 9th and March 10th. This initiative, also proposed by the Holy Father, has been taking place every year since 2014, on the Friday and the Saturday preceding the fourth Sunday of Lent. In addition to this chapel in Bethlehem, where the perpetual adorers of the Blessed Sacrament are present in the Eucharistic Adoration, there are other chapels involved in the project in Kazakhstan, 
in Bosnia-Herzegovina, in the Ivory Coast, in South Korea, and in the Philippines. Each one of these chapels houses a tabernacle created by the team of the Polish artist Mariusz Trapikowski, since art and beauty bring the faithful closer to the Blessed Sacrament. We want peace to reign, first of all, in our hearts and in the societies in which we live, and then we hope it spreads throughout the world. God can give us peace. We just need to ask Him in a sincere and fervent way. And beauty, which favors prayer, causes our hearts to beat at the same pace. And this place that invites us to implore the peace of God. The prayer intentions include the resolution of the conflict between Palestine and Israel and unity among the different religions. For men of goodwill, communion is absolutely possible. We are here in Bethlehem at Jesus' birthplace. It is the place where the angels announced peace and in which God desires to give peace to mankind. Here in the Middle East we can see that the different states and nations want to establish peace, each in its own way. Anxiety has pervaded the human heart with original sin. For this reason, I am very happy that so many people of good will wish for peace. We want to establish it knowing that only God can do it through us. <laughs> The Rewak Center was founded in Ramallah in 1991 with the purpose of registering and restoring historic buildings in Palestine, protecting them, preserving their collective memory, and their national identity. To implement this strategy, Rewak has launched an initiative called Registry of Historic Buildings by publishing numerous books and volumes that document thousands of images and maps. Our heritage is in danger because we have no infrastructure to support it, neither within the village councils nor in the municipalities. We do not have laws that protect historic buildings. Rewak initiated the National Register of Historic Buildings project in 1994, which ended in 2006. It includes all the historic buildings in Palestine, including Jerusalem, West Bank, and Gaza. A total of 50,320 historical buildings in 422 cities and villages. With the completion of the National Registry of Historic Buildings, a 13-year process, Rewak now has a complete archive of data and information which assists in directing hundreds of architects and workers who specialized in the rehabilitation and restoration of historic buildings in cities and rural areas. Rewak has a specialized team of experienced designers and architects who have taken part in specialized courses and studies in restoration work, but the best restoration school will always be our work experience in these buildings. In the city of Kalandia, located north of Jerusalem, there are still historical buildings that still need to be recovered. Its archaeological district of Hal Haikia, used now for social purposes, is one of them. Previously, this area was in a state of neglect and it was about to collapse. During our tour in the small city of 1,700 inhabitants, the Rewak's architect, Aya Tahan, spoke about the importance of preserving this neighborhood and giving it new life. This public use building for the benefit of the inhabitants of this city, the village, and the neighboring villages is an example of Rewak's modus operandi. The goal is to create a suitable cultural and social environment in order to change people's opinions about ancient buildings. By preserving these buildings, we preserve our heritage, our origins, and our existence in this country. If we lose this building and other similar buildings, we lose our inheritance and our identity. I joined this uh, 
this college because I love uh, cooking from where, when I was a child. I finished high school in Israel and I came to Notre Dame to learn the art of cooking. I have been trying to become a first-class chef for a long time. I am currently in my second year. I signed up because the hotel industry is essential in Jerusalem. I started working in a hotel, but I did not go to school for that. At work, I realized that this is a profession that I really like, so I decided to learn more, and I love it. I love learning how to cook. This has always been my hobby since my childhood. My father taught me how to cook, and we used to do it together. I came to the Notre Dame Center to learn more. Here, I cook, I study, and I work. No one can be wise on an empty stomach, George Eliot once wrote. The Pontifical Notre Dame Institute of Jerusalem, owned by the Vatican, took this mission to the letter, founding the Professional Promotion Hospitality Section, the only postgraduate center in the hotel industry in East Jerusalem. The Hospitality and Culinary College, which is, uh, was established in 1990, with a few major programs into hospitality industry, into the culinary and cooking programs, and into the, the tourism industry, where we have a total of something around 160, 170 students running throughout the year. They are invited to choose between three different biennial programs, which can be added to an afternoon practical course that is condensed in one semester. The institute is co-ed. Christian and Muslim students come from East Jerusalem, but also from the West Bank, and they find work often before finishing the course, both in East and West Jerusalem. This process stimulates the small pieces of an integration that is actually being implemented and which is in line with the mission of Notre Dame Institute. From the beginning, it was not only a place for pilgrims, it was also a school that offered training activities, especially for the local community. The objective was to help the young people of the Holy Land and the entire community as well find a job and receive good training. This college is renowned in Jerusalem for its relationship with customers. It trains us from a practical as well as a theoretical point of view. We learn a lot in different areas, management, service, and the art of plating. Today, for example, we are focused on service. We are taking care of everything from A to Z to satisfy customers. We try to welcome them and to make them feel at home and not in a strange place. We started such a program uh, which we call Applied Restaurant, where students start cooking and other students start serving in our Applied Restaurant four days a week, and we have it open for the public. Any guest can come and just, you know, uh, enjoy the student's meal and enjoy the student's service and give an extra, um, you know, motive for the students. Since 2017 till now, and I was never disappointed and the quality is excellent and we get to meet and encourage our students from the country. From Monday to Wednesday, guests can choose from a menu, while on Thursdays they can enjoy a thematic buffet prepared and served by the students. The first step to wisdom is guaranteed.